Okay guys, I think I found the solution for protecting against a rogue charge controller that shorts high voltage PV to the battery. And I think it's gonna end up being this contraption I got set up. So I got this really large contactor. You can get it at battery hookup. This is a 500 plus amp contactor. It'll do uh, 900 and up to 900 volts DC. These actually are really expensive. They sell for way well over like $200, but you can get it from battery hookup. They sell them for 25 bucks. And if you use my discount code, BMC, uh, you can get five more percent off that. Uh, so that is hooked up to this little doohickey here that came from Amazon. This is kind of a, I think they sell it as a battery charge device, which it's, it's not very smart as far as a battery charger. It just has a relay, so it turns the charge voltage onto the battery, and when it hits a set voltage, it turns off. And then it also has a low voltage, so if the battery drains down to a low voltage, then it kicks the relay back on to, to turn the charger back onto the battery. It's a very simple device. It has a couple different modes, but I'm using this particular mode right now where I, I want it to, it's gonna shut off if the voltage is too high, which is what we wanna do, right? One thing that I did have to do, I had to do a little modification because on the output, it has like a battery detect function, so it won't actually work properly if it doesn't detect a, a battery here. So I bypassed that, and so I had to make a little modification to bypass that. So if you look at that trace right there, it was, it was connected to the plus of the output. Um, that's the sense that's gonna sense if there's a battery. So I cut that trace, I scraped it back and soldered this wire on and ran it across the board to, he wants to be in the video. I ran it across the board to that, to that dial right there. You see that? And that's just the, the positive voltage here. And I soldered it there. And so that effectively bypasses the, the battery detect. It just um, runs the voltage across from here uh, to here and it just always thinks there's a battery So you do have to do a slight modification you see the battery voltage is at 13.6 right now and To set the parameters here. You just hold the set button down. That's the upper voltage So that's the voltage. I want this protection device to shut off So if this battery hits 14 volts and of course you're probably going to want to set this up higher Maybe you know 15 volts or something like that or 14.5 but at 14 volts, I want this contactor to shut off because I'm assuming that, you know, something's going bad. And then there's the lower voltage range. This is the kind of like the recovery voltage range. So the contactor won't re-engage until the voltage of the battery goes down to 13.5. <clears throat> now you need this um, setting to be, you know, one step above what you're going to normally charge your battery pack at. And the reason why is that if the uh, if this thing comes on, it's powered back up, and the battery is uh, above this voltage, then this relay won't actually even come on. So you need to set this slightly above what the maximum your charge voltage is going to be. So let's just do 13.7. So at 14 volts, it'll shut off. At 13.7, it'll come back on. Save that, and you'll hear the, the contract, uh, contactor is engaged now. So yes, you see my, my battery voltage is 13.6, which is uh, 100 millivolts below that uh, reconnect voltage. Just for uh, demonstration's purpose, we'll just assume that I'm only gonna charge this battery up to 13.6 volts. Um, and this is going to work properly fun. Does that make sense? So anyways, I just wanted to show this thing to you. And um, next step is I'm going to take the high voltage PV output and directly connect it to the battery and see if this thing shuts off and doesn't explode like it did in the last video. Uh, I'll leave links in the description where you can get this from battery hookup. And I'll leave the link in the description where you can actually pick this up from Amazon. 
So I'll be back once I get this hooked up to, or get ready for this to hook up to the solar and we'll run our test. <laughs> Arc welding. Well guys, you know, while I'm sitting here melting my PV cables, that's the 120 volt uh, open circuit. I am going to, first off, I think I'm gonna go ahead and set this uh, upper voltage limit to 14.8. Maybe I'll set the lower voltage to, let's do, let's do 14. Okay. So contactor is engaged. It's hooked up to my battery pack. We're going to hook up this 120 volt DC direct from the PV array to a 12 volt battery and see if this contraption will protect the battery. Here we go. So we're showing 13.7, so it's raising. Whenever this, let me see if I can just zoom in, 13.8. 13.9, 14. Fourteen five. So I think when this gets close, I think I'm going to stand back in the event that that explodes. So it's at 14.7. <laughs> We should be able to hear the contactor click off. There, it did. It clicked off. Nothing exploded. Nothing exploded. Good. Cool. This uh, is flashing showing that uh, it shut off. The battery voltage is going down. It's um, uh, back down to 14.6. Guys, this worked. All right, so this is a solution to protect. Not only are you going to protect your your expensive battery uh, in the event of a charge controller failure to short, um, shorten the panel directly to it. But you're going to protect your domain from catching on fire. And I know lithium ion phosphates are more safe and stuff like that, but what if you have lithium ion? That would light your battery bank up like a candle. And uh, you don't want that. The other thing is, not only are you protecting your battery, like if this is directly after your charge controller, you know, it, all your equipment, your battery and your, say your inverters or whatever equipment you got after this is protected too. So to me, that's really important. You're, you're, you're protecting your investment. This cost me 20 bucks. This cost me 25 for, for 45 bucks, $45. I've got a solution that will protect me against, you know, some people are saying, you know, get a better charge controller. I agree, I totally agree with that. But what if other charge controllers have this problem as well? You know what I mean? What if, what if you got an expensive charge controller and it just happens to short a MOSFET bringing the PV voltage directly to your batteries? It's possible, guys. It's completely possible. Yeah, so our power, our Voltage is slowly going back down. And so when it goes back down to, what did I have it set at? The upper limit is 14.8, 14. So when it goes back to 14, this will actually re-engage. And it'll kinda, it would connect the uh, panel back to the battery. But, you know, uh, it's not gonna allow it to, it's never gonna allow it to get to that, you know, over that full, that you know, 14.8 volt, and uh, you would be safe still. Even though this is 120 volt, you know, it's being dragged down by the battery. So as long as it doesn't get into that real unsafe range where it's gonna blow your, you know, vent your batteries, catch fires, or destroy your equipment, we're good. So anyways, like I said, um, I'll leave links to these. Battery hookup, get this at a stupid good deal. Um, 
Amazon. I'll leave the link to that. If you use my discount code BMC, you'll get a 5% off this already cheap $25 awesome contactor. And um, there you go. I mean, what else is there to it? I think that's going to be, that's going to be my solution. Oh, the other thing is that I want to mention is this contactor says um, the coil voltage is like 25 volts or 24 volts, 12 to 24 volts. I looked at the data sheet. It actually says 12, it actually says 9 to uh, 36 volts. So a little bit higher voltage. Uh, if you're using this on a 48 volt system, this thing actually can handle the six, uh, 60 volts, up to 60 volts. This thing, you probably don't want to run it that high voltage, but you can get a DC DC buck converter and put in between here and the relay, which I actually do have. You can get a DC DC uh, buck converter that will lower the voltage, you know, from your 48 volt system for to energize this thing at a safe voltage of, you know, 12 or 24 volts or 36 or whatever. And uh, that would solve that problem. So this can be used on a 12, you know, 24, 36, or 48 volt system. Um, so, anyways, there you go. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. I hope um, if you guys are looking for a solution to protect your batteries from uh, a charge controller going, going crazy, then uh, I think this is a good solution. Catch you next time. I do want to mention that when you hook this up, make sure the, the power for this device is on the back side, the battery side of the contactor. That way when it switches off, this device doesn't get blown out. Because if you have if you have this wired on the front side where the charge controller is coming in to this relay, when this relay switches off and disconnects the battery from, from it, this voltage is going to shoot up to 120 volts or whatever your, your array voltage is at. And uh, it's going, it would blow this thing out. So make sure this is powered from the same spot uh, your battery is on the, the contactor. Another thing too is um, this contactor has a positive and a negative. I don't know why. If you guys know why, could you tell me? Um, I looked in the, the data sheet and it just said that's the positive side of it and that's the negative side of it. I don't understand. Um, but what I did do is hook it up as if it was like a battery. So I hook the negative terminal to the positive uh, in terminal of the battery. So hooking it up like a battery in series. And then I hook the positive terminal to the positive coming in from the solar. So that's the only way I could think that it's supposed to be hooked up. But I don't really understand why it has an actual polarity. So if you guys know why, let me know.